Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are the 7th of June 2022, and today we have Hervé Lemeur, Aïdemien Duportal, and Stéphane Meur. Tim and Mark are at the Silicon this week in Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get started. So the weekly uh, first announcement, the, the weekly 2.351 is not released yet. Um, uh, we faced some a set of different issues. Uh, first set of issues that um, we might still have some, we'll see during the packaging phase. So we reached almost the end of the release phase that takes two hours. First set of issues come from infrastructure changes uh, because Hervé and I tried to homogenize the configuration between a fresh CI and release, but it appears that there are some subtle differences between the two underlying Kubernetes clusters and we were beaten by these elements. So that has been fixed. We might have some related to the way Windows container are scheduled. So we are looking into it. Uh, no worries, if it fails, it's only the packaging phase, so that one is easy to retry, and it's quite fast. Um, we had, so infra issues, Kubernetes Jenkins configuration, so that's literally the way uh, pod agent are scheduled. And there were also some, I won't call these issues, but more, um, let's say first steps, uh, since the image Docker packaging was upgraded to use Ubuntu 22.04. One of the main changes um, that was from the 18.04. Uh, so that's two main LTS uh, jumps. Reason is that because the version 20.04 was missing some uh, some tools that we need for packaging Jenkins. The main change is that we changed uh, create, so Tim and Basil worked on changing uh, a tool named create repo to the new version create um, repo dot C, uh, sorry, underscore C. Um, that was the main core of the change. That tool is used to generate RPM repositories for Yum, Red Hat, and this galaxy of this Linux distribution when you are on Ubuntu or another distribution. So you don't have the Yum install uh, whatever SDK to build RPM repositories. So that tool is a way to build this on something else than the Red Hat galaxy. Um, the issues that we had are related to open SSL and uh, JDK changes. Uh, let me write this down. So open SSL, we are using on that latest Ubuntu version, open SSL 3.0.0. whatever beta alpha, I don't know. And that one uses stronger ciphers by default. Alas, as for today, the certificate that we use to sign the Jenkins release are not compliant with this uh, latest cipher configuration. So we had an issue and we had to we are we have to use for now the legacy mode of OpenSSL. We might have some long, some long term fixes, but that's one of the issues. The other one is that we were building Jenkins with GDK 11. However, um, we still had GDK 8 and team removed the GDK8 to decrease the size and simplify the image. But in the process, we forgot to update uh, some variable on some pod templates that were specifying the full path to the Java to be used by the agent. Reason is because we had GDK8 to build Jenkins and GDK11 to run the, the agents on the same Docker image container. That's why uh, we had this setup before, and now we don't need, we have GDK 11, thanks to the work of Basil and team, but we had, we forgot about that thing. So we removed that setting and we use the default Java on the container. So now we have reached the release um, and let's continue to watch this release. So that was, 
there has been a question from Alex, not my fault on IRC, about could we stage the changes? Um, that's something we already tried in the past. So for the sake of sharing that knowledge, most of the time, the effort to create a switch that say, if it's not a real release, but a pull request or a staging, then you have to build, sign, but do not deploy. Uh, the complexity of such a code is to maintain, to build, to test in itself uh, is really risky because it will mean uh, releasing and deploying a new release compared to the fact that we have a weekly and the weekly can be run multiple times per day. Each time it creates a new release that is exposed publicly, but that's not really an issue. So it's a kind of better and easier for everyone and faster to test in production in a real environment, especially the signing part is quite sensitive and it's hard to test it. So that's why we chose for that one. However, we still had a topic with the stage with the from the security team that is there since at least three years, I think, about being able to stage the release. That will mean running the release one day before the real life release. Like we would want to build and prepare packaging the Monday, for instance, and during the Tuesday, we only have to um, promote the release publicly. So that's a high level idea. Um, that might create some interesting challenges to solve. The Docker registry, the easiest one, but that means creating temporary registry for Maven, pushing the war and metadata on that one, and then promoting that one publicly. The most complicated case as identified by Olivier last year is about the packaging, generating DEB, RPM or SUSE packages on a staging environment that should remain private could be complicated because you have an index of packages that need to be updated. So maybe we could use different file system, different services. There might be a solution. I don't say it's impossible. I say it's not that easy. That's why we never had the time to spend on that one. Is that clear for everyone? Did I forget something? Okay, do you have other announcement? Nope, okay. Let's go. Let's start by checking what was done this week. Uh, I'm taking them on the order they are presented on the closed issues. That's weird because the order is not kept between open and closed issue. I don't understand, but once an issue is closed, you cannot change the order, so that's why. It's not about priority. Nginx 1.22 campaign. So in fact, that was done faster than expected. And I realized while checking the latest change log from the ingress controller, the latest stable version of the Kubernetes Nginx ingress controller, at least the community one, is still on Nginx 1.19. Uh, so that means I might have been too quick on pushing forward on that issue last week. It's done and it's stable. It has been done on all uh, the use cases we had, so nothing else to say. Is there any question on that topic or things not clear? Okay. Uh, build our own Docker images. Congrats, folks, on that uh, on that uh, huge work. So now CI Jenkins IO when running a plugin uh, build on Windows, uses Jenkins CI and Fry custom Docker images inherited from the official Jenkins CI inbound agent, but built on our infrastructure. That was a huge work involving a lot of code. So congrats, survey on being able to deliver that one because uh, PowerShell can be painful sometimes. Just a note, while working on that part, we were able to break Infra CI uh, because we try to schedule container and during a, a configuration change for InfraCI, Kubernetes tried to reschedule that container to a Windows node because we missed some uh, scheduling elements. Uh, the consequence is that we lost all the data of the data volume 
because Kubernetes tried to mount the data volume on a Windows server node that tried to run a disk check on that one. And we didn't realize that and killed the pod, which has the consequence of un force unmounting during the disk check. And that thing totally made the content unavailable. We could have tried to recover the data by mounting the data volume to a temporary virtual machine, but we went ahead and recreated it from scratch, which is not a problem per se, but we lost the build logs, including the report generation. Uh, so for the future, we need to, to be careful on that area. That will be a topic around being able to back up the data of the private cluster using Velero or something. I think we have an issue for that. Uh, that's not the top priority right now, but knowledge is shared on that meeting about that. Um, we were able to update the configuration uh, and the constraint for scheduling in FRACI. So now the Elm chart is, won't, will never try to reschedule on a Windows node. So thanks, Hervé, for all the hidden work on the pipeline library. Now you're an expert on the Groovy shell library. <laughs> And we can go forward on the images. Is that clear? Did I miss something? Is there something else you want to add? Any question? Okay. Next topic. Thanks a lot, Stefan, for the help on the update center certificate, which uh, was going to expire for the 14th of June. And that was blocking any update center and crawler builds. That's a safety mechanism. Um, we were able to get help from Olivier, who, who is one of the owner of the CA key. So only the three person that are KK, Oleg and Olivier are allowed to get that key to sign the new certificate. He did that and uploaded it to Trusted CI to help us. So many thanks, Olivier. And Stefan and I were able to put a bunch of documentation, fixes and tests. So everything is green and working and documented, and we have a calendar alert for next year. So thanks a lot, Stefan, for the support and for putting all of this together, because a lot of things happened at the same time. No question, nothing to add, something unclear? Okay, next topic, use Docker instead of IMG by default. So thanks, Hervé, for that. Uh, so now all our Docker images are using Docker by default or specifically, which means they are built under virtual machine with the Docker engine instead of being built by EMG on a Kubernetes pod. Builds are faster, but we use uh, ephemeral machines, virtual machine instead of container. So what we gain in faster builds and tests, we lose on spawning, spinning up virtual machines that takes one or two minutes compared to the few seconds for a container. Any questions, things in clear? Okay. Uh, we had an issue from Alex uh, about IMEM agents, iMemory, uh, virtual machine agents and CI Jenkins IO that were stuck. So there were different uh, causes. Um, we fixed what we could by switching the retention policy of the Azure virtual machine agent from let's wait sometimes before cleaning it once it has been used by a build to delete it as soon as a build finished with it. That was already the case for the EC2 agents. However, there were a set of word settings on the case of EC2. There was a timeout to wait before and the policy once. And on Azure, we weren't even using that policy. Now both clouds are using the same policy with no timeouts. And it looks like that it's working. I cannot be 100% sure, but at least we didn't saw some uh, a bunch of IMEM machines in a weird state waiting for minutes. That should allow us also to provide faster builds, um, less retention and decrease the cost. So let's see if you have an issue on that part, please raise an issue on the help desk uh, GitHub tracker. Do you have any question for this one? Um, the release last week that failed, two causes. One, because the release happened Wednesday after we merged some pull requests on the Kubernetes management. So that was temporary. 
usually we try to avoid to do this. Uh, let's, but that time we, we missed that the Tuesday windows and started our infra stuff during the Wednesday. That happened. Uh, second one is uh, missing MB command. So that's a consequence of my work on the mirror brain part. Uh, thanks, Hervé, for helping me on fixing that. And thanks, Olivier, for putting all these scripts on the GitHub repository. So we were able to fix it. It's working. Uh, it looks like it's working. Uh, let's confirm later today. That means uh, the, uh, I have more work for cleaning up the mirror brain machine because there is a bunch of scripts that are not tracked by puppets that we removed, so we need to clean it up. There is an issue for that that has been uh, opened. Thanks, Tim, for the last task. IRC cloak for Libera, uh, as requested by Alex. I have no idea how it works, so thanks a lot, Tim. <laughs> any other tasks that are closed for you or that I forgot? Or any question, things unclear on that section, folks? Okay, so let's go ahead on the work in progress. I've tried to put priorities on the work in progress. Uh, let's try to keep that priority on the new milestone. I'm taking a screenshot just to be sure. Okay, first one, Docker Hub rate limiting. Um, so I've closed the open source program associated the whole issue because we are part of the open source program. and. CI Jenkins IO is not at risk now because of the API rate limit for the agent. But now we still have rate limiting uh, because the open source plan does not automatically grant our accounts to a professional paid account, which means we still have an API rate limit for the official Docker base images and for the all the Docker official Jenkins images that we build, we need the base image from the operating system, Alpine, CentOS, Ubuntu, etc. And we are rate limiting for these images. Um, so we are in discussion with Docker. We are waiting for them to apply a team plan that should increase the thresholds. I've put a set of short-term solution that would help on the issue. Uh, with each one as its own pro and cons. So that's a summary of what we discussed during the past weeks and months about that topic. Uh, but yes, for now, we are quite annoyed. Uh, just a note, I realized that there are a lot of tests that fail because they used images uh, and they rebuild images while the images are already rebuilt for some end to end testing. And that could be improved. That should improve the rate of um, uh, succeeding stages. But that's a specific pipeline stuff on the project. So right now we still have that thing and we are waiting from feedback to Docker. If we don't have any feedback uh, end of June, then we will have to act and find another solution. Any question or things unclear on that one? So if it's okay for you, we'll keep that one on the next milestone. Uh, the reason is that I should have news from the folks at Docker. Uh, and I might want to, if anyone is interested to deep dive on the testing process for the images that we call improve. Next topic, Bootstrap Terraform uh, project for Oracle. So thanks Stefan for the work on that one. Um, that was required for the migrate update Jenkins IO to another cloud. Uh, the status is work in progress for bootstrapping the Terraform state. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the status is that now you have the states that are created on Azure buckets. Uh, you are able to manage technical user on the API key through the Terraform state private project. And you are working on now having a Terraform output to generate the sub secrets so we can bootstrap the empty project on Infra CI. Yes, almost there. Cool. That should be done before this weekend, uh, given the rate uh, of work that you are putting on it. So unless I'm missing something, uh, we can put it on the next iteration. Any question on that one? Okay, next one, DigitalOcean sponsorship. 
Um, first of all, thanks Hervé for um, uh, checking the costs. Uh, that was worrying that uh, the May billing was bigger than the amount of credits that we are have. Uh, double checked on the detailed uh, invoice. And in fact, it was just the note pool that we deleted the first uh, day of uh, May. So we are okay, we are consuming 10 to 15 bucks per month now. And the actual uh, real time billing uh, view on the Digital Sun console seems to confirm that we have consumed less than $2 for June. And now, Hervé and I, we have to take appointment with Digital Sun folks, discuss with them for the next steps. So that's why I'm adding that issue to the next milestone. Sounds good for everyone. Upgrade to Kubernetes 1.22. Uh, status was upgrading kubectl. That was the first step. Um, so I've opened an issue. Update. So the work that Stefan did is good because we have a, an automatic pull request. I'm putting that on the screen that proposed to update to the latest 1.22. Whatever. So we can merge that one, but I've put the comments. Uh, we cannot test it for now because we are uh, we have a Docker Elm file issue. There has been a change on EKS, Elm, Elm file, combination of these three on the latest uh, stable version of the Docker image, which failed to check for EKS. I've put the tips on that area. We have to fix that. It's okay for AKS and DigitalOcean but not on Amazon. Sounds like that that's only uh, something on the cube config that we should have to fix, but I haven't had time to dig. And that one is blocking the Kubernetes 1.22. So for the person who want to take the Kubernetes 1.22 uh, next release, you will have to work on solving uh, the issue. I will do my best. Um, I'm trying to go back to the issue. Yep. So Stefan and Hervé, you are assigned to this one. Uh, do you think you will be able to work on it next next milestone? Yes. Okay. Um, remove IMG at all. So now by default, we use Docker, but we still have IMG tool uh, defined and used. So on the pipeline code that I'm not sure if it has been cleaned up or not, but that will, we will have to. And on the Docker uh, builder, I think image. Yeah, I, I have been uh, to request uh, to, to close this issue. Cool. So it's work in progress, but almost there. And if I understand correctly, we can put that on the next milestone. Am I correct? Yes. Cool. Just a reminder for the two of us, Hervé, once we will have finished that one, so we'll, um, we will have to synchronize with Gavin about the future of the Docker builder image. Because that image was initially only for uh, building and testing Docker images with IMG, CST, and the Docker tooling that you have moved to the, the virtual machines. And then Gavin used that image as well for NPM packages and stuff uh, that are used to regenerate the preview of so, some websites such as Jenkins.io, plugins Jenkins.io. So that means we might want for now to keep that image but focus it on NPM in, and Ruby installations and tooling. That means we should be able, the, sorry? The, the, or not the uh, Inbun agent, for example. No, uh, completely different. Uh, I, I, we'll I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Later. I'm not sure, but I understand it's only for the preview website from the website folder in InfraCI. It's on the InfraCI area. That's the only usage. So we just have to be careful, but that means we should be able to remove all the GH and CST and Adolin tooling uh, around along with AMG. So 
So migrate update Jenkins SIO to another cloud. Stefan, is it okay if I put that to the next milestone and we can start working either you, I, or, in, or Hervé on that yes. one? with pleasure. That's the, the aim of the bootstrap for Oracle, yes. So I've put a command saying it's blocked by the previous one, so we don't start until uh, that one is fixed. Sounds good for everyone? Yes. I propose to not put any assignee and one of us will start working and propose to the other to pair. Uh, depending on our um, schedules. Does it look good for you? Good for me. Okay. And last one on the work in progress, auto notify people based on service routing rules. Uh, Hervé? Uh, next week would be good. Uh, work in progress. Good week. Yeah. <laughs> one to fourth week. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I should have, I should have, uh, I should not have put it on well, I'm from Ariston, but. No yeah. problem. And to be quite honest and transparent, the pipeline library plus PowerShell, that issue was sneaky. And of course, this kind of issue take way more time than anticipated that it all your available bandwidth. So no worries on that area. That's all for the that milestone. Um, on the next, uh, so the next important thing I'm searching for. Okay, uh, infra team sync next, and the new things. Um, I want to start with three elements. As we say, Docker packaging update has impacts on weekly. I have an issue to write that should put together everything that happens today that made uh, today release uh, being a bit late. That's a task, a new task to be written. Um, I think it would be important to have an issue about infra CI backups. Can I ask uh, one of you to write an issue or update uh, an existing issue with the backups topic to mention that uh, infra CI need a backup? I don't think we should start working on implementing it, but at least mentioning it and maybe searching. Is there a volunteer for that? One, two, three. It's okay. what, um, something like uh, Velero to save the PVC content? Uh, exactly. That will, but that will be the work of putting that together on an issue. On an issue, checking if uh, so. There might be a backup generic issue. That doesn't make sense because backupping the whole infra is complicated. But maybe having a, a specific issue saying, okay, we need to backup infra CI uh, um, Jenkins home data volume and explaining Velero could be a solution with a point to the Velero documentation. That should be enough. It's only issue tracking. Can I ask you to take this one, uh, Hervé? Okay. And finally, just to let you know, I've been asked by Jesse Glick about Jenkins from 49707. Um, that one will generate a lot of pull requests on different workflow plugins. This is full open source. The goal for that one will help uh, us a lot because it targets to retry automatically if we put the correct setting on a pipeline the stages when the agent went down during a pipeline. The use case initially was uh, us using spot instances for virtual machines. If the spot instances is reclaimed by the cloud you are using, the agent is stopped in less than one minute. You don't want end user having to retry the, the builds by themselves. Most of the end user doesn't have access to the uh, replay builds button. That might be complicated and it's annoying. So the goal is if we configure properly the shell library, uh, all the plugin builds at least will be retried. And uh, also the BOM or ATH builds, when they have agent that cannot be spawned or in a weird state or abruptly, uh, sometimes we have agent that stop the connection on their own. We don't always know why. That will allow to only retry the failing stage. That's why I understand the issue. That will be really useful. And that has been started because of the CI Jenkins IO issues. 
So we might need to install the unstable plugin on CI Jenkins IO to try it. Don't hesitate to check and raise a hand. Um, Jesse is searching for feedbacks on different areas, not only technically speaking, but for us as an end user, providing is it okay for us what he, what he proposed, the keyword on the pipeline, does it seem usable, does it seem to meet the requirement we have. On the infra team sync next. Um, okay. Yep. Are you having your topic? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's not really important, but uh, I have to fix a test for uh, my fix for the Semver uh, um, image uh, tagging uh, on parallel build with uh, mm -hmm. Docker and publish image uh, function. As now. Uh, Without uh, my fix, it it uh, publish um, the same uh, tag with uh, image name in them uh, without uh, bumping them. Okay. We will launch uh, a build, and uh, uh, on my pull request for the fix, I have a problem with uh, tests. Okay. Uh, I I'll try to. Do you need me to pair with you, or do you just need some time to work or help? I'd like some some pairing, yes. No problem. Do you have other new important topics that would, that could or could not be on the infra team sync next milestone? No. Nope. Okay. Um, on the upcoming topics. Uh, uh, Java 11 infrastructure thread. So Basil did some work a few weeks ago. I think that one will come on next week. The goal will be try to remove GDK 8 uh, uh, and use GDK 11 everywhere. That topic will span from now with the new release today until the next uh, LTS that should drop GDK 8 support around September. So we have at least two to three months to work on that topic. I'm just mentioning it, it's for knowledge sharing. Um, there are issues around weekly release build not, not being able to resume, so and key clock horrific performance. Don't today to pick them. Specific one for Stefan, not important, but if you have time or if you, have blo or if you are blocked on other subject, continuing the garbage collecting for AWS. So you successfully, as a reminder, applied it for cleaning up the development images built by the pull request on Packer image. Now the goal will be to add the staging cleanup. Uh, that's the uh, uh, other part and checking the state, of course. Uh, for the rest, yeah, we have a set of issues. Don't hesitate to pick them up, but given the bandwidth of the team, let's continue next milestone unless you see something here that is important. The redirection for Jenkins is the way. Um, I think we just need to take the ownership of the of the domain, or at least the DNS for the domain. Yep. That's right. So yeah, we just need Mark. Mark and Alisa, and both of them are the Silicon. Uh, so that's why. Let me put that on top so we won't forget it. That's good to mention it. Thanks, Stefan. Um, next week we should be okay. Right now, the most urgent part of that issue is that the Google research are at least redirecting people to the yeah. root of the new website and the new URL uh, with that chance that should be improved in the in the future. So let's wait next week. And the issue about the Migrate Blue, um, sorry, the Terraform Import Unmanaged Oracle Cloud Resources mm -hmm. that's linked to uh, the, um, the one we just discussed. Uh, yes, but that one is not emergency okay. in the sense that uh, you have to finish the task about the base project and then we can take in parallel importing and adding the new update center machine. Yes, I understood. Do you have, do you have other questions? Don't say date. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing screen first. Now I'm going to stop recording. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.